at Ivers. Um, he's been the past president and the vice president of the Filipino American Association of Certified Public Accountants. He is a zone chair for uh, a number of Lions Clubs here in the area. He's the co-host of the Philam radio station and he serves as a board member on a number of uh, different boards here locally. During his presentation, Bobby will try to keep the terminology simple and non-technical. It is not his intent to make you an accounting expert or to make a non-technical person an accounting or finance expert within this hour. Uh, what is important that you understand some basic concepts of maintaining good financial records to help you in improving the way that you manage your business. This webinar is co-sponsored by two organizations, the Filipino uh, Chamber of Commerce of the Pacific Northwest and the Asian Pacific Islander Chamber of Commerce and Entrepreneurship, which is a national organization. So we'd like to hear from both of these organizations, starting with Abe Roto Ogilvy, president of the FCCPNW. Tony? Yeah, thank you. Maganda uh, hapon sa inyong lahat. My name is Tony Ogilvy, and I'm the president of the uh, Filipino Chamber of Commerce of the Pacific Northwest. And I want to thank all of you who have, uh, who have uh, chosen to join us today in this very informative workshop. Uh, Dom already explained to you what the workshop is all about. Uh, what's important is that this is the first of a series of workshops that we are doing. Um, uh, the next one is on October uh, 22nd, Thursday, same time, called Preparing a Successful Business Loan and uh, Grant Application. And there are, there, it's more than likely there are going to be more grants available. And many of you uh, small Filipino businesses may need loans to get you through this pandemic crisis or to grow and expand your business. So you may want to tune in. Then on November 5th, we're going to start training everyone uh, to start using social media to promote your business uh, because this is the new wave uh, that's coming uh, in our economy, uh, you know, uh, given the pandemic crisis and the use of technology. And then, uh, and then finally on November 19th, uh, again, 3 p.m., uh, we're going to uh, discuss how to create an e-commerce platform to sell your goods and services online. Now, keep in mind that all of these workshops are free of charge. And uh, again, you, other small businesses, your, you know, your colleagues should take, try to take advantage of these things that we are presenting. Um, uh, if you're interested in joining the Filipino Chamber, and I know that some of you are already our members, uh, you can go to our website at fccpnw.com uh, to learn more about our organization. And we have a lot of different things uh, uh, coming up in the future. And so uh, uh, we want you to stay in touch. So, so pl please, uh, please join us if you can. And then uh, and as I close off, I want to uh, uh, thank ACE for being the co-sponsor, uh, you know, National ACE, the National Asian uh, uh, Chambers and Entrepreneurs. And uh, I want to introduce uh, uh, a Kababayan, uh, a, Philipp a Filipina, Janet uh, Apilaka, who will inform you about what ACE is all about. Okay, Janet? Yeah, it, it's, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Tony, for that uh, nice intro. My name is Janet Alakpala. I'm the project manager for the Asian Pacific Islander, American Chamber of Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, also known as National ACE. We're a national nonprofit organization whose mission is to serve as a strong advocate of AAPI business interests and affect positive change of all issues that enhance and advance the goals and aspirations of AAPI business owners. For the past few months, we've worked closer than ever with our national network of more than 60 affiliate chambers and partners across the country to ensure that the AAPI business community has the most accurate and up-to-date information about the important resources that are available to our community during our global pandemic. Our most recent partnership with the Filipino Chamber of Commerce of the Pacific Northwest uh, is one of the most strongest that we have and most recent that we have. So we're grateful for that. We're also thankful to Anthony Ogilvie, Dom Chiaba, and Bobby Abutin for providing the space for the discussion today and allowing us to have an interactive forum for this very important issue of managing your financial records. We're proud to partner with FCC PNW on today's event, and we're working together on additional collaborations in the near future and beyond. As many of you know, we're just beginning to see the data on the impact of COVID-19 and what it's done to the AAPI business community. 
A recent report by J.P. Morgan Chase shows that the balances of Asian-owned businesses declined by 22% since early April. At the end of March, revenues for AAPI businesses were over 60% lower than they were in the prior year. Overall, Asian-owned businesses have experienced severe damage to cash balances and revenues, and they're going to require more assistance from the federal government to fully recover. As many federal assistance programs have since stalled, we know that additional targeted interventions will be necessary for the small businesses that have been the hardest hit and will continue to struggle. National ACE has instituted a program to help tackle many of these issues, including helping individual businesses with financial assistance, as well as helping individuals, individual businesses restart their operations safely and strategically. If your business is in need of one-on-one -on -one consulting or other resources, please contact us through our website at asmallbusiness.org. I'll also provide that in the chat. All of our uh, services are also free of charge and we're here to help. Again, thank you for having us on this uh, webinar today. We're thank you, thankful to Tony and Dom and the Filipino Chamber of Commerce of the Pacific Northwest for hosting this event today. And we are so looking forward to hearing about this great topic today. Thanks so much. Thank you, Janet, and thank you to National Ace. We're very happy to be uh, in partnership and collaboration with you. So a few housekeeping things before we begin. Uh, there will be a question and answer period after Bobby Nix's presentation. If you have any questions, please place them in the Q&A section. You'll find that at the bottom. There's a tab there of your screen. So go ahead and type in your questions and we'll ask them of Bobby uh, as many as we can at the end of his presentation. We will also be providing handouts of Bobby's presentation. We will email these out to you um, after the meeting or after the presentation is completed. Lastly, um, we will also record this session and provide it uh, a link for you. I will put that in the, uh, uh, the chat session, uh, the link for this. So if you want to re uh, re review <laughs> what we present, you're more than uh, welcome to. So without further ado, uh, let's listen to Bobby Abutin. Hi, good afternoon. Um, okay, so let's start. So I will be presenting lots of information today. You will be sent a package of information following this workshop via email that will help you retain and apply what you have heard. This workshop aims to provide you an overview of various ways of managing your financial records and its importance. It will always be your, it will always be you who will choose which component will fit your situation. During this COVID pandemic, what I have seen as one of the benefits of a good financial record management is that it makes it easier for small businesses to get a loan like the Paycheck Protection Program loan. And that's my email, uh, bobby at abutin.com. So if you have any question after this webinar, I'll be more than happy to answer or refer you to the uh, person that would uh, be able to answer any uh, professional uh, question. Okay, so managing your financial record. Although our focus is uh, on this four topic, what are financial records and financial statements? Why is it important for financial records to be kept in a systematic and efficient manner? When should we discard our financial records? And how to maintain financial records? I will also share with you a little about how to record financial transactions and the various financial statements that will be produced from your financial record. I want you to remember the acronym GIDO, okay? Garbage in, garbage out. Many small business owners feel that managing your financial record is just a waste of time. Oftentimes, maintaining good financial records get placed on back burner because it tends to be tedious and monotonous. However, some business owners do not realize that when they mismanage their financial records, the growth and stability of their business are greatly affected. When financial data results to inaccuracy, your financial statement becomes incorrect. Again, the acronym GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. It implies bad interpretation of records which result in bad reports. 
Managing your financial record in systematic and efficient way can help save you a lot of financial headaches, especially during a, an audit. The responsibility, the responsibility to sustain substantiate entries, deduction, and statement made on your tax return is known as burden of proof. You should be able to prove certain elements of expenses uh, that's being deducted from your income tax. So let's go to what are financial record and financial statement. Financial record are all documents, folders, ledger registers, and book of records needed in the preparation of financial statement. Accounting records include records of acquisition of asset like deed of sale, credit card statement, receipt, invoice, bills, ledgers, journal, and other financial documents such as check issued, customer invoice, bank statement. What are financial statements? Financial statements are formal documents representing the transaction of business individuals or other organizations, such as income statement. Income statement represent the revenue, expenses, and profit loss and losses generated during the period uh, reported period. Balance sheet. This represents the asset, liability, and equity of the entity as to the reporting date. Statement of cash flow represents the cash inflow and outflow that occurred during the reporting period. And statement of retained earning represent changes in equity during the, the reporting period. I will share with you sample of this financial statement later on. Other records that also included uh, as part of the financial record are initial capital, purchase, receipt, paid in, bills, customer invoice, and others. As a general rule, all business document that has affected or will affect your business should be kept at least for the prescribed period. For this workshop, I just want you to understand that there is a prescribed number of years to keep your financial document. This document provides proof of specific event occurring. This document provides proof of specific, according to the IRS Revenue Code, the Internal Revenue Service can assess, refund, credit, and collect taxes your business within a specific time limit. This limit are known as the statutes of limitation. When they expired, the IRS can no longer assess additional tax, allow a claim for refund by the taxpayer or take collection action. The, the, the determination of status expi statute, uh, statute expiration differ for assessment, refund, and collection. A statute of limitation is a time period established by law to review, analyze, and resolve taxpayer and or IRS tax refund. When should we discard our financial record? It is important that you know that there is a period of limitation in discarding financial record or document. As an example, for those documents, folders, and records that can be disposed of in four years, put them all in one area and location. As a business owner, it is your comfort level that would determine if you will do a paper-based or a paperless system in keeping your financial record. What's the difference? Basically, it is either keeping paper, document, or in your office, or maintaining a digital copy. Basically, that's it. <laughs> there are disadvantages in keeping a paper-based system. Some of them are, they say, it's time-consuming in filing, and retrieval for invoices, receipts, checks, expenses are so cumbersome. Physical file costs keep growing. What are some advantages? Uh, you do not need computer scanner. As paper is physically by nature and therefore tangible and visible, a person need not have any, any knowledge of computer to handle the work. We can enumerate more advantages and disadvantages, but everything follows the same rule. You have to keep a folder, you have to maintain book of accounts, and you have to do reconciling of accounts. Remember, 
organize your financial record in an efficient and beneficial manner. You know how. For financial record files that you use frequently, keep them in the most accessible but secured place, such as in a filing cabinet. Confidential files should be kept in lockable storage cabinets. Now, let's say you decided to do book the bookkeeping by yourself. How would you maintain your financial record? I recommend putting them in a folder. This is just a simple example, and you can maintain as many folders as you like. Important is you know where to locate a specific document in any given time. Important, be sure that you're properly identified them as to amount, date, description, and nature of transaction. Now let's briefly discuss its folder. Sales folder. Sales folder is primarily to track down sales to customer. A customer is an entity that buys your primary goods or service. My suggestion is to file your sales invoice in numerical order. Include even the voided sales invoices. In the sales invoice, I suggest that you write down payment information, date received, amount, and date deposited. Use index card or ledger to, to keep track of your transaction history with customer. If you are given term discount for early payment, be sure to include that info in your index card. Cash receipts folder. I suggest that you file them by date you receive. When you receive payment from customer, keep a copy of check received. If you if you receive cash payment, be sure to include your official cash receipt date and specify the sales invoice number that this payment applies. Take note of any term discount. You need this when you do your bookkeeping later on. Additional capital cost infusion from business owner, file, deposit. You have to file deposit slip with the name of the owner. Other or miscellaneous cost receipts like sales of small equipment, office supplies. You have to attach the receipt. Write down the amount, the date, the deposit, the description, and the nature of transaction. Be sure that you properly identify them as the amount date received and deposited description and nature of transaction. I always say that because it's really important that you put them. Purchase vendor. In a purchase vendor, you have to file your bills or invoices by vendor. You should have folder for each day, uh, vendor. These vendor folders are often time called, referred to as subsidiary ledgers. Keep track of due dates on your index card or subsidiary ledger for EEC referencing, especially those that have payment early payment discount. Taking advantage of early payment discount increases your income. Cash disbursement folder. In this slide, I'm going to give you an example of payment transaction voucher. Your payment voucher form should identify item purchase, amount, description, and nature of transaction. The form should include the name of employee who prepared, reviewed, and approved the payment voucher before presenting it to the check signatory. You can create your own payment voucher form or have them printed. File them by, by payment voucher number. Attach invoice or any other supporting document like receipt in, the, in your payment voucher. Payroll folder. For payroll sheet, you have to put the date, attach time cards, and then attach uh, also the payroll deductions like the federal income tax withholding, Social Security and Medicare taxes, also known as FICA taxes, 
state income tax withholding, local state withholding, such as city or county taxes, and wage garnishment for child support and debt payments and others. We also have, um, I also suggest uh, having a supplemental order. So what are, the, uh, wh what are the things that you can put on this supplemental order? Well, basically anything that's not related to the first five folders, okay? Which is the uh, sales order, cost receipt, vendor folder, cost disbursement folder, and payroll. Some example of transaction that you will file in your supplemental folder are credit card transaction. So you pay them, um, you know, on credit. Um, bank charges and other bank transactions that you only recognize during bank reconciliation like ACH transaction, direct deposit payment, bill pay online, bank interest income in savings or interest bearing account and others. Now, uh, recording your financial transaction doesn't have to be a difficult task. The more you properly manage your financial record, the easier your bookkeeping will be. There are several ways to record your financial transaction. Either manually, use of a spreadsheet like QuickBooks, and accounting software like QuickBooks, Pitsy, and or you could also employ your bookkeeper or an accountant. Now, after you create your folder, it's time for you to do the bookkeeping that reflects the financial transaction in your folders. So we'll go first, what are those manual ledgers book? These are cash book. Now the source of your cash book would be your cash receipt folder, cash disbursement folder, and some supplemental folder. In your sales book, you have your sales folder and supplemental folder, okay? Purchase or voucher payroll book, you have your purchase, vendor folder and supplemental folder. Sorry for this error. Uh, it should be purchase payment voucher book. And then the payroll book would have your payroll folder and the general journal book would be, would have your supplemental folder. Now, these are just example of cost manual Book. Cash book would include transaction in your cash receipt folder, cash disbursement, and supplemental. I suggest that your column, you have to have your date, the name, the description, the folder reference, the source of this transaction, the deposit. This would be the date that you did deposit the check that you received. And on this column, the check number would be those checks that you issued to pay your vendors or um, other pay. And this would be the amount. Now, this represents your chart of account or uh, expenses, expense or cost of uh, sales account. Then if you don't, if you have, if you need additional column or if uh, there's only a specific number of column in your ledger, uh, you could add, this other account and you could put uh, the correct uh, account to charge your, uh, the one that you either debit or credit. Now as a recap, use index card or ledger to keep track of your sales transaction with customer. Include in your index card ledger, the name of customer, contact person, contact number, and term discount for early payment. Now, it is necessary for you to have a, a, a reconciliation, especially if you're maintaining a, a sales book. So reconciliation of account receivable would basically the one that say your term, in this case, 1,550. And again, the subsidiary ledger or so your index ledger should have one for its uh, customer. So in this case, the 700, would come from this, which is the outstanding balance. And then from your cost ledger, the payment, 
you have to deduct that. So what we're trying to do is, um, you know, come up with 1,050. And uh, the customer ledger, which is uh, based also on the sales book. So for customer number one, you have 700. And of course, basically because we only had a few transactions, we could say that customer three has uh, $200, customer four would have 150, so that's 1,050. So uh, you're sure that you, know, uh, you have a, a good and accurate uh, record, financial record. For purchase voucher, um, purchase voucher it is basically those that you that would have transaction from your purchase and vendor folder and supplemental folder. All vendors would have its own subsidiary ledger like the one. Accounts payable ledger should always equal vendors accounts receivable. So uh, on the uh, first few slides, it's accounts receivable. So you have your customer ledger. On your accounts payable uh, or purchase voucher, you uh, it, it's called accounts payable. So in this case, we have the $600, which is the 1,100. Okay, and uh, I'm just showing to you where the 500 would come from. And this 550 is from the past ledger. So you got a net of $600 and your vendor subsidiary ledger is also $600. So, wow, good. You, you have a good financial record. Now for payroll, I would advise you to keep an employee payroll information wherein you would have, if you have an ID number, the name, social security, address, you know, and other information, of course, the rate, you know, and uh, insurance and any deductions. Because that information are needed for your payroll book. For your general journal, supplemental uh, voucher or folder, this would include some of them are non cash transaction, like for sales discount, Although you initially uh, uh, charge it to accounts receivable because you paid them you, uh, on time, so you got a discount. So that's basically a sales discount, and then you credited at accounts receivable. For prepaid, sometimes uh, you, if you're using the expense method, so you initially put every uh, all payment of uh, supplies to an expense, but then at the end of the period, let's say uh, on 131, you still have some unused supplies. You know? So in order uh, for you to uh, not expense everything, you have to recognize an asset, which is a prepaid supply. So you debit whatever uh, you, know, um, you have on hand, and then you credit the supplies expense. So a, a little uh, accounting uh, on that side. When do you think um, this financial book are needed? Well, basically, they are needed to create your financial statement. Financial statement are written, written record that convey the business activities and the financial performance of a company. Financial statements are based on your financial records. So you see now the correlation. A sound management of your financial records will result to accurate financial statement. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. Here are some examples of financial report or financial statement. Income statement. Income statements report the revenue, gain, expenses, losses, net income, and other totals. This statement shows the operational result of a, for a period of time or fiscal year or calendar period. It is also referred to as profit and loss statement, PNL statement, statement of income, and a statement of operation. Balance sheet. Balance sheet present a company's financial position at the end of a specific date. This statement includes asset, liability, equity, capital, 
at a point in time. In a non-profit organization, balance sheet is referred to as state, not a financial position. Balance sheet reveals your business overall financial health. All balance sheet have three categories. The asset, the liability, and the owner's equity. The statement of cash flow. The statement of cash flow reports the source and use of cash by operating activity, investing activity, financing activity, and certain supplemental information for period specified in the heading of the statement. The statement of cash flow is also known as cash flow statement. It is report that generates and that spend that they generate the in, uh, the cost, uh, the inflow, and the and those that was spent during a specific period of time. Retained earning. Retained earning is an overview of the changes in the company's retained uh, earning section. We call it statement of retained earning. Okay, the statement prepared for outside party such as investor and lender. A statement of retained earning may be used as a tool to finance a new product launch, divide dividend payment, and to fund an expansion of operation. This is it. There is no right or wrong way of maintaining financial record. The important thing is personal transaction and business should, should not be mingled. Your financial record should always have supporting documents like invoices and bills. You can record them manually or in, accord, in an accounting system or spreadsheet. Get into the habit of keeping track of all your business transactions. Be sure that you properly identify them as to amount, date, description, and nature of transaction. Review your financial record always. Keep them in a secure place where you can easily retrieve them when needed. Thank you. Keeping your financial record would be challenging when you do not have an accounting or bookkeeper or do not have an accounting background, but it should not keep you from preparing a sound financial statement when you know how to manage your financial record. Your financial record are the key ingredients to your financial statement. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Bobby. Um, we will now take uh, questions. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. Um, we do have a few for you, Bobby. Uh, first question, I have a small business that takes up a lot of time Keeping financial records seems to be very time consuming. What should be the most critical financial records I should maintain? Well, basically, uh, all, all financial records should be kept um, you know, properly. Um, these are records that um, would show how, many, how much expenses or, or and income your company has. And these are the things that you reported to your IRS. So, uh, I mean, um, putting them all together in a folder by month for sales, you know, um, and, and expenses by, uh, by a vendor, as I said, would be much easier. So in case, you, you know, you, obviously you need a, a bookkeeper or, or an account of help, uh, you could just, you know, turn over all those documents to your bookkeeper, and it would be easier for them to uh, record the transactions. So I, I would suggest that keeping uh, them, it's better to have more of the supporting document than, um, you know, not, none at all. All right, next question. If I apply for a bank loan to expand my business, what financial records will be the most critical that I should provide? Well, m m mostly it's going to be financial, uh, uh, you know, uh, all those financial statements, which is uh, the income statement, balance sheet, 
uh, and some banks I knew would require you to uh, submit the cash flow statement because that would determine if you're capable of, um, you know, uh, getting the loan or, uh, you know, um, but uh, I would suggest you, you um, consult with your accountant uh, and, and banker uh, because they do, each bank institution has a different uh, requirement. So I, it's better to uh, consult them directly. All right, next question. I am with a nonprofit organization. Do I need to keep the same details of financial records as a for-profit business? Of a nonprofit organization um, usually do fund accounting. That means more or less separating um, uh, transaction by grant or by contract. Um, there's a, a slight difference as far as I'm, you know, uh, in, in, you know, fund accounting, you know, profit accounting. Because profit accounting, sometimes you have to keep track of activities, you know. But in nonprofit uh, accounting, you have to keep track by contract or by grant. So, um, you know, basically, uh, yes, if you're, if you're not familiar or if you have not have any experience with non-profit organization um, and you're only uh, familiar with like a one product line of business, then you're gonna have a, a hard problem understanding non-profit account. Uh, so uh, again, so, uh, my suggestion is uh, uh, you could consult or uh, seek advice from your accountant, or you could call me after this webinar. All right. Uh, next question. My bank can convert all the checks I prepare and send out according to business, business expense items to QuickBooks. If I use this approach, will this save me time? Yes. Yes, you could. But remember, uh, there's certain uh, limitation when you download um, your transaction from QuickBooks, okay? Um, I knew one of them is, let's say you issued a check to a vendor, but uh, it involves number of categories. Like for example, uh, you purchase some supplies, some are being used to, the, to maintenance, or, 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 and there are times where you, know, it, you may have to capitalize it. You know, if it's a supplies expense, you have to, debit them to uh, an expense account. Now, a capitalized, you have to debit it to a capital, uh, to an asset account. So, uh, and, and I know in, in, in Fairfax, you are only allowed to have one category. You, I, I don't think you could um, uh, identify how much of the check that you issued are for, for, for a certain uh, transaction. So I would always advise that uh, you, you check them um, uh, with, with your, uh, with, with, with what you intend or how, what the nature of your uh, purchase or payment. All right. Uh, last question that I'm seeing is, are you aware of any apps that can help me keep track of my income and expense? Uh, that depends. I mean, you know, uh, if you're kind of familiar with uh, uh, if you're comfortable doing computer or, or uh, like uh, QuickBooks. I mean, I, I, uh, QuickBooks is a really good uh, accounting software. Um, it, it's very handy, uh, you, you can try that. If, if not, uh, try to work on Excel file uh, because in Excel file, as long as you have the category in one column, uh, you could do a pivot table on it and then uh, it, it would uh, more or less uh, do the financial statement um, as you make it. Uh, if you're not really comfortable uh, in, co in computer, then do the one that I just presented, the manual, okay? Uh, uh, as long as you do have those documents handy, uh, you would not have a problem, a big problem with the IRS when uh, engaging that one. Thank you, Bobby. Um, I'm going to announce the upcoming work workshops. If you have any further questions, you can put them in the q and I'd be more than happy to ask them after um, I go through our little um, advertisement here. 
Um, so we have three upcoming workshops. Uh, the first one being on Thursday, October 22nd, uh, from 3 to 4 p.m. It's titled Preparing a Successful Business Loan and Grant Application. The workshop after that is on Thursday, November 5th, again, from 3 to 4 p.m. That is titled Using Social Media to Promote Your Business. And our fourth workshop will be on Thursday, November 19th, again, from 3 to 4 p.m., and that is titled Creating an E-Commerce Platform to Sell Your Goods and Services Online. Um, we believe that uh, you'll find these helpful, so we hope that you will sign up for them. Uh, once again, this um, presentation will be mailed out to you and is available online at www.fccpnw.com. We urge all of you to become members of both the Filipino Chamber of Commerce of the Pacific Northwest and ACE, the national organization, our two co-sponsors. I see no further questions, so I'd like to thank Bobby for his time and for his presentation. I'd like to thank Abreto Ogilvy and the Filipino Chamber of Commerce and Janet Alekpana and the Asian Pacific Islander Chamber of Commerce and Entre Entrepreneurship, also known as ACE. Thank you once again for your attendance and uh, please join us in our upcoming workshops. Take care. Good afternoon.